In today's video, I want to take a look at multidimensional arrays and ways you can implement them. So to start off, let's start with a simple array. So how would you implement a simple array? Well, there's only really one way, you just define it here. So say int array, and then you give it some values inside the bracket, say two, seven, and 10. And well, if you want to iterate it, you just go well int i here, and then i equals zero. something like that. You simply have an i that goes up to the number of elements, which is three in our case. And if I run this, I should get those on the screen. So that's fairly self-explanatory. I think you've used this quite a few times. Now, how do you scale this up? How do you make a two-dimensional array? So what's a, what's a two-dimensional array? Well, a two-dimensional array really is a an array that can be accessed through multiple indices, right? So instead of having just an i here, we would need an uh, i and a j, right? So we would need another index. But how would you define that array that can be uh, iterated through like that? Well, there are two main ways. I'm gonna show you first a very simple one and secondly, the more complex one. The first one is just have as many elements as you need inside the multidimensional array in just a simple array. Basically, if I want here, for example, a, so suppose I want a three by three array, right? All I have to do is just say that this, uh, it just make this array the size three by three or exactly nine. And let's add some more numbers. And just like so, so we get nine here. And well, this is just, a simple array, uh, it's not multidimensional, it just has one dimension, right? It's, of, it's uh, of size nine. But you can consider it having two dimensions. <clears throat> have one uh, index i that goes one by one, right? And have another index j that goes uh, in increments of three, right? So if I, well, if I did it here just with uh, zero to nine, that's a simple array. But if I iterate it from zero to three, and then I get another four, or four of course define here another variable, so j equals zero, and again, go up to three, j plus plus. And if instead of using uh, just i here, I change this to actually use uh, i times the number of elements in a row. Well, since the array is three by three, that should be i times three plus j. So as you can see here, indexing it like this, it's actually going to make a three by three array. And to actually prove the point, what we can do is say printf backslash n here uh, after we've printed every row. So an i represents a row and j represents every single column, right? So once we've printed a row here, it's going to print a new line at the end of it. So if I run this, you'll notice I get three lines and with three elements each. So we basically print on the screen a three by three array. We've indexed it as a three by three array, but in all reality, it's just a simple unidimensional array. How do you pass this to another uh, function? it's the same as with any other array. You just simply pass in here, let's say void process. Let's say we want to pass our array. I'm gonna say int pointer array. And then the other, and then the rest of the code goes here. And you can index it the same way as we did in here. Okay. And you just pass, it, pass, pass this as process of array. Since this guy decays to a pointer automatically and you just have to pay attention and at how you index it. Nice. Now let's take a look at the second way to actually implement multidimensional array. And that is with like what you'd expect, right? With having instead of one uh, dereference, one set of square brackets, have two sets. So have R of I and then of J. Right? This is what you would call a multidimensional array really. But okay, I'm gonna get an error here saying that uh, I cannot dereference it because I have to change the code in here. 
So now to define a multi-dimensional array here, what we have to do instead of saying nine, we have to say three by three, and then have another uh, set of brackets for every single uh, three numbers, for every single row, basically. So if I set it here properly, come on like that, like that, there we go, and this guy, okay. And if I run this program, you'll notice I get the same exact result. But really, what have we defined in here? Like, what is this R of 3 of 3? Well, as you might notice, this guy is, well, denoted by the brackets, by the pair of brackets, it's actually an array, right, because of this, and it's an array of arrays of integers, or more specifically, an array of three uh, arrays that each have three elements, making, of course, nine elements. And uh, with this setup, you might notice that I had to add the numbers in here because you are sort of forced to add the number of elements inside uh, the square brackets when you're instantiating multidimensional array except for the last one, right? So, so here I can remove the number of elements from the outermost level of arrays, basically this one. So if I remove it, well, this says that you can define as many arrays as you want, and I'm gonna actually have the size here. So if I define another array here, say just an array that has the number one, it's going to set it so that it has four arrays now. So it's gonna automatically increase or decrease depending on what we initialize it with, okay? But uh, you cannot actually change the number of elements inside each array. So here I cannot say uh, comma five and expect it to work. It's not gonna work because it doesn't have enough space, right? We only have three elements in here. So all the arrays inside this multidimensional array has to have the same size. Okay, so now we have this array. Uh, indexing it, it's just as you'd expect, array of i and of j. But how? what, what does this actually mean? In a previous video, I did talk about dereferencing and how this square bracket operator works. Really what it does is, instead of saying, really, it says array, and when I say array of i here, it's actually just array plus i, and then you dereference it. Right, so you dereference it once, once you've added the plus, the i to this pointer. So this will get us the, basically the i-th element from the array. It's, they are exactly the same thing, array plus i dereferenced with array of i. But in our case, we have also j. So this is further amplified. So this guy, this result is actually also added to it the number j, and then it is dereferenced. Okay, so as you can see, uh, this r of i j really boils down to double dereferencing. So you first add i to it, then you dereference it, then you add j to that, and then you dereference it. And of course it's like that, because uh, you first have to dereference the outermost array, and then you dereference this uh, row, which represents, or this, this array which represents the row of this uh, multidimensional array, okay? And this is why you, whenever you're trying to pass this uh, array to another function, you have to have a double pointer in this case, or a triple pointer if you have multiple levels of arrays, All right? So here, when I have to pass in as many, well, it's a double pointer because it's a 2D array, right? If we had a 3D array, we would have to pass in a triple pointer. Right. Not as we had before where everything was just unidimensional. We just changed the way we index things, right? So the previous version of our uh, to the array was just uh, changing the, the way we index things. And I think that's a bit faster to implement. Anyway, uh, so when you try to call this, you're going to have to actually have to pass in array as a double pointer. And this is fine because note here it's a double pointer and you should dereference it twice to get to an int. And this is what R of I of J does, right? Dereferences it twice, albeit with some pointer arithmetic. So if I try to run this, you'll notice I'm gonna get the same result as before. 
So this is how you can also implement an array. Either be it as just one really large array that uh, holds all the elements of that multi-dimensional array, right? And you just switch up the way you do indexing, right? So i times the number of columns plus j, that's how you index it. Or what you do is you have arrays of arrays. So in this case, it was a big array that, ho that held smaller arrays, each holding enough elements for a single row. This is another approach. Both of them are fine. I just think that uh, whenever you're working with multidimensional arrays, it's just easier to work with uh, simple arrays because you only have to deal with one single pointer, right? There's just one array, one start of that array, one single pointer to that array. You don't have to deal with pointers to pointers as we have here. And this gets especially difficult when you start having uh, dynamically allocated arrays, right? So imagine if I want to, instead of having this, I want to dynamically allocate it. How would I go about it? Well, first I'd have to have a uh, double pointer, so double pointer to int array. Then I'm gonna have to say malloc that to size of what? Well, I want to allocate it for pointers because I want uh, arrays to arrays to integers. So pointer, this is the array pointer, the main pointer, then that should go to another pointer, so size of pointer, int pointer, <clears throat> and times the number of arrays that we're gonna have in this main array, which is three in our case. Okay, but then to initialize it even further, you have to actually do a for loop. So something like, let me just move this here, i equals zero, i less than three, i plus plus, and you're gonna probably have to have here an uh, array of i equals malloc of size of uh, int, this time not int pointer, because we're of course storing integers, times three. And of course, you're gonna have to free this memory as well. So do note here that this is what you're gonna have to do. Uh, and this is much more complicated, although it does allow you to dereference it in such a way that it makes more sense than to actually do some uh, arithmetic into it. I really, th that's why I really prefer the uh, one really long array because in that case, dynamically allocating a one really big array, it's very straightforward. We don't need an, a for loop. We just need uh, int, just one pointer because it's just one level. Uh, malloc size of int, not int pointer, and times three, times three. And this should instantiate a, f a space for f a three by three array here. And then you can, uh, of course, uh, change the way you do indexing plus J and that should work. If I launch this, I'm probably gonna get some garbage values. Yeah, that's to be expected because I didn't actually initialize them. So yeah, okay. That's all there is to it. I hope you got something out of this video. If you do have any questions, do leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Take care, bye.